from KTUL Tulsa. You're watching Good Day Tulsa. Celebrity historian Rafi Andonian is joining us this morning. He's going to tell us about why we shouldn't be fooled because 1970s gas prices do not have to mean 1970s lines. He's joining us over Zoom this morning to explain exactly what that means and how it relates to our history. Rafi, I'm glad you're here because I was a young, young, young child in the 80s. But I remember my parents talking about this, about how bad the gas lines were. And all I could think is when these numbers start reaching there, are we going to do that again? <laughs> That's right. And it was the high gas prices and everything going nuts with the, uh, you know, oil supply. A lot of people are remembering those memories, right? Remember those long lines from the 1970s. But uh, we haven't seen the lines that some people expected over the last several weeks. And I don't expect them. And I have three reasons why we had lines in the 1970s and we don't today. First and most importantly is the uh, price ceiling. Price ceiling is kind of like a price cap, right? So okay. everyone, you know, in economics, you've probably all heard of supply and demand. And that's the uh, balance at which the uh, buyers and sellers meet for the market price. And, and so when the government intervenes on the market price, you start to have problems. Let me give you an example. So uh, let's say the market price is $4 for a gallon of gasoline. And the market put, and the government puts a price ceiling lower at $3. Well, what that does is the market price wants to be higher than the government allows. So okay. there's this tension that's pushing that up. And that's what happened in the 1970s when OPEC, which is the oil producing companies of the Middle East, cut back on its supply that created you know, less oil and scarcity when there's less of something, then the price wants to go up, right? But the government said, no, we're not gonna do that because what the US government did is they put a limit on the dollars, they, on, on the price per gallon that you can spend at the gas pump. And they did that in two rounds in 1973 under President Nixon, the Republican, and again in 1979, President Carter, uh, Democrat. And so with the price so low, the consumers want to buy more because it's cheap. It's like going on a shopping spree at Costco or something. <laughs> and, and so companies, on the other hand, at a certain point, the oil companies, they're not going to want to keep producing more at that cheap price because they can't justify producing more and more when it takes more expenses to you know, cultivate more oil and the price isn't high enough to cover that. So you have companies and consumers going in opposite directions and that price ceiling is really causing problems, right? Today, on the other hand, the price is allowed to go up because you don't have the price ceiling. So you have no shortage. And what happens is because the price is going up, some people say, eh, it's not worth it. You know, um, maybe I'll go and uh, 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 carpool for my commute to work, or I'll go to the grocery store once a week instead of twice a week, or I won't take that road trip right now. And so that's when you saw the prices rise, 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 and then they stabilized because it found a new market price, a new balance between buyers and sellers. But in 1970s, when that wasn't allowed because the price was suppressed with the government um, doing the price ceiling, you had the shortage. And so the next question came up of who gets the gas? How do you determine? And that leads me to reason number two, that you had lines back then, but you don't today. And that's rationing. And the government did that in a couple of ways. If you, for example, you might remember uh, odd days and even days. That means some people could right. get gas on odd days and others on even days. So only half the calendar that you could get gas on. And when you went to the pump, you can only get so many gallons. Again, rationing. Right. And so what does that do? Well, think of 2020 with toilet paper. When we had limits on how many you know, bags you could walk out with, what did a lot of people do after they bought it? They went right back in line and bought some more, right? Mm. But what does that do? That extends the line because you're going back in line over and over trying to get it in pieces, stock up when you can actually get it. And that leads me to the third and final reason that you have uh, lines in the 1970s, but not today. Totally different regulate, regulatory environment. Regulation then, today, much more deregulated. So all that, all that we mentioned are different regulations, right? And a couple more kind of things to consider here are, you know, back then the, the government had regulations on the kinds of oil that U.S. suppliers could put out. So that limited what they could do. And uh, in addition, we can, some of us might remember speed limit being at 55 miles an hour. They reduce the speed limit to use less gas. And so that regulations, it, the series of different regulations made the situation worse. And what happened is that back then you had this regulatory environment that you don't today as the industry has deregulated. So finally, what that means Putting all these pieces together is that back in the 1970s, you had prices low with the number of people in lines high. And today you have prices high with the number of people in lines low. Rafi, you just explained what I didn't understand and went through several classes in college to try to get in a matter of no time. I can't thank you enough for the time you spent with us today. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.
All right, thank you. Uh, the guy, you can get more information on that. I think it's very fascinating at orchestratebusiness.com why high gas prices don't mean long lines anymore. Orchestratebusiness.com.